open community approach for capacity building to improve public health through collaborative mapping for risk management and tailored allocation of available resources. This presentation is structured in the following way. I will start with the introduction, then I will go on with the objectives. I will go into the methodology. I will present the developments and results and I will close the presentation with the conclusions. Introduction The Action Team 6 was established in 2001 by the United Nations Committee of Peaceful Users of Outer Space as a mechanism for initiating the implementation of recommendations of the third United Nations Space Conference Unispace 3. In 2002, Action Team 6 proposed an initial action plan. UNUSA 86 was inactive due to missing resources. In 2007, a new development and focus was elaborated by the co-chairs Canada and WHO. The new focus was to facilitate early warning mechanisms for infectious diseases using space technologies and Earth observation data, building human capacities and collaborative structures on national and regional levels. In 2009, India became the new co-chair with Canada. The last workshop of the Action Team 6 was held in Montreal, organized in cooperation with the UN OSA and ESA June 19 to 22, 2011. The subject Space Technology for Public Health Actions in the Context of Climate Change Adaption addresses the following objectives. Present the latest research programs, approaches and policies that capitalize on innovative partnerships addressing satellite technology, climate change and public health and provide networking and knowledge opportunities in new surveillance and risk assessment methods aimed to address health conditions arising from a fast-changing environment in a better way. An informal work session took place after the workshop to expand on the ideas of several participants of the workshop. The first outcome of this session was to explore the scope of a proposed training workshop to be held from 30th July to 1st August 2012 at a UN campus in Bonn organized by the University of Koblenz-Landau in Germany. This training workshop focused on capacity building in the area of public health and spatial epidemiology. The second outcome of this session was to explore the format of an organizational unit as member state activity associated to UN corpus responsible for promoting teleepidemiology and public health. This would be formatted as a collaborative group of practice based on the desire to share expertise and capacity for all participating countries in an open way. According to the discussion with and response of the UN SPIDER representatives in Germany, establishing Action Team 6 follow-up initiative 86 FUI as a UN corpus subcommittee seemed to be very unlikely. The time of the proposed first international 86 FUI workshop in Landau had to be planned in 2011 without having a decision if 86 FUI could continue to the work of Action Team 6. UN SPIDER operated as co-organizer for the workshop 2012 in Bonn, Germany. It was agreed that this decision of core organization with UN SPIDER is preliminary. This provides an operational structure until the 86 group has made a final decision about its future. 86 FUI was proposed as a member state initiative in the context of 86 responsible for promoting improvements of public health by application of space technology. 86 FUI had a terminated end communicated in Corpus in February 2015. Since 2016, the expert focus group Space and Global Health, EFG SGH, builds on the 86 and 86 FUI. There are two organizational elements which take place once a year each, forming the expert focus group. First we have the political facilitator, which is a side meeting of the working group at UN USA Corpus, where participants have to be appointed as delegates by the member states, especially for public health activities, a support and guiding framework of national public health agencies is necessary, because any public health activity of the expert focus group needs a national mandate 
and the cooperation of national and or regional public health authorities. Member States can trigger the expert focus group support via the expert focus group meeting at UN COPUS in February each year. Delegates of the Member State trigger the support to a steering committee consisting of official, official national UN delegates. These requests determine the expert focus group workshop contents for further developments and will return official statements according to the developments and objectives back to the member states that triggered a support requests. To address the issues of security and quality of service of an open community approach, the subcommittee decides to move um, approved elements from the information sharing branch into a quality assured and political approved branch of the joint expert focus group depot for capacity building. Open community is a generalization of the concept of open source to other collaborative effort. The term open for an open community refers to the opportunity for anyone to join and contribute to the collaborative effort. The direction and goals are determined collaboratively by all members of the community. The resulting work or product is made available under a free license so that other communities can adapt and build on them. In this context, the product of the open community is an improved public health by application of space technologies. The second organizational element is the academic community of practice. An expert focus group workshop or respectively international expert meeting where a wider target audience for knowledge sharing, development and implementation is addressed for promoting teleepidemiology and public health is implemented. The United Nations University established in 1973 functions as an academic arm of the United Nations and links with international academic and policy making communities. The expert focus group can be regarded as a contribution of the overarching UNU activities because the UNU undertakes research into pressing global problems of human survival, development and welfare that are the concern of the United Nations and its member states. Objectives The following items describe the main objectives of the expert focus group. The first objective is to support the multinational concept of sharing in an open source, open content, open community environment. Furthermore, the expert focus group wants to identify the national objectives that overlap with objectives for mitigation of structure equivalent public health problems in other member states. This objective is important as it results in sharing of developmental workloads between the different member states. Another aim of the expert focus group is to enhance cross-national collaboration for public health problems and their mitigation by application of space technologies. Finally, the expert focus group wants to support the member states that they can successfully mitigate their public health problems on their own by capacity building. The expert focus group can operate as a networking hub and as a back office established by the concept of a living lab. The study describes a practical application of the open community approach and investigates in how far an open community structure has the potential to support the initial step of collaborative mapping for human humanitarian risk mitigation strategies. In this context, the concept of a living lab is proposed as a support concept of the open source open content application of collaborative mapping for risk management and tailored allocation of available resources. Furthermore, a description of the conference procedures applied within the expert focus group is provided to enable the reproduction of the concept so that also stakeholders from developing countries can apply the concept to implement joint problem-solving activities. Methodology Public health problems are multifactorial and collaborative mapping requires close stakeholder collaboration. A living lab approaches these problems by an integrating concurrent research concept in a user-centered open innovation ecosystem. This approach is promising for the concerns of the expert focus group.
The approach of virtual conferences enables dif the different parties of the Living Lab to communicate without the exclusion of parties due to financial issues, for example, traveling expenses. The application of space technologies leads, for example, to processed remote sensing data in a GIS for collaborative spatial mapping of risk and resources to enable the derivation of humanitarian risk mitigation strategies. The main purpose of Living Labs is an accessibility of GIS information results in public awareness and local and regional response activities on risk mitigation integrated in innovative tailored workflows. For example, the application of GPS and precision farming with low-cost technologies and a cheap single smartphone could implement a precision farming approach for reduced pesticides usage with the same agricultural productivity. The smartphone can be used with an open source navigation system, for example Navit, and offline maps, for example from OpenStreetMap, for tailored treatment strategies for the crops. For the crops. Um, space technology will be used for crop health detections um, and monitoring. The application of space technology is a precision farming support with low-cost technology and open-source software on a smartphone. User involvement and feedback in these instances are crucial to ensure that the product meets the requirements of the users and that it is understood by the users. Within the Living Lab environment, this user involvement is guaranteed. The basic principle of reducing the total cost of ownership for members, which implies that more communities with financial constraints can apply software and content, can be applied for the conference setting as well to facilitate remote scientific stakeholder collaboration. The reduction of the financial threshold to participate in a conference was significantly reduced. The following description of the conference procedures is applied so that stakeholders from developing countries can join the problem-solving activities. Participants register online for the workshop like it is common for other conferences. If a participant wants to present a topic on the workshop, she or he can apply her or his presentation on the registration form this year, 2016, for the first time a pilot for the integration of paper submission to the low-cost meeting design is tested. After re the registration period is over, the expert focus group organizers develop the workshop agenda with its several sections. The uniqueness is the design of the workshop. It ensures that a virtual participation without the necessity of physical attendance is possible. The participants can take part via virtual participation mode, either from their place of work in the member states or from regional organized meeting points in the different member states. The communication platform of the workshop is a browser-based video conference software. The virtual participation mode is necessary for the workshop concept to overcome the limitations of funding, uh, the travel expenses and accommodation. Presentations of the workshop are available in a video or screencast format two weeks before the official workshop starts. These videos are created by the authors of the contributions. Participants can download and watch the videos and screencasts prior to the workshop and they can register for video conferencing during a consultation hour or in a chat environment with a group of participants to post questions to the presenter. Face-to-face -face questions during the workshop and the answers will be recorded in the chat environment so that people in the virtual participation mode can follow the discussion and comment to the items. The videos of the presentation are displayed um, on one da data projector, the chat environment on a second one also visible for the face-to-face -face audience. The support concept is based on joint depot of digital content. Because of different requirements and constraints in the member states, the digital content should incorporate a licensing model that allows modification, translation, rewriting, adding and substituting elements in the provided digital resources. 
it is essential for the sustainability of an open community approach that the rights to change the available resources are attached to the course material itself and that they are not provided by a single person or institution that is granting individual rights for a period of time and or for selected institutions, member states or projects. As mentioned above, all presentations on the workshop will be available as a video or a screencast presentation for assessing um, the knowledge through the web portal of the expert focus group. Making these presentations available for the expert focus group community is one example of open sharing through joint depot of multimedia resources. Mainly two technological aspects are important for the described open community approach of the expert focus group workshops. One aspect is the creation and provision of the open content material collection um, of open source software that provides the features to perform a certain task. Furthermore, there is a requirement to perform a communication platform and exchange platform during the workshop that provides open access to results without charging readers and authors. At the same time, the quality assurance has to be established. Versioning of documents assures the openness of the development, while digitally signed documents of selected versions with open documentation of the reviewer assures the quality of the signed documents with the scientific reputation of the reviewing scientist or reputation of an organization, for example WHO. The essential open content materials for the workshop are the videos of the presenters. On most other conferences, speakers present their information on slides and add their audio comments at a stage during the presentation. This is not possible for the expert focus group workshops as the concept of virtual attendance of the participants would not work out otherwise. The, early, the easiest and most sustainable way to do this is to create videos which include the information of the slides and the audio com comments to the slides. For the video creation, the slides of the presentation saved as image files and the audio comments saved as audio files are necessary. In a video editing software, for example KDN Live, the image files of the slides and the audio files have to be joined together and the length of the single files has to be adjusted. The second possibility is to create screencasts which record the actions on the computer, um, on the computer screen during the recording time. The creation of the screencasts needs special screencast software, for example VocuScreen. Screencasts are very useful for tutorials and process descriptions at a computer. In both cases the final product is a video file, which becomes open content when it is uploaded to a video, plat a video share platform like YouTube. In order to make it easier for interested people to find the videos after the workshop, they should all be organized in one video channel. A browser-based video conference software, for example Flash Meeting, has proven to be appropriate as a communication platform for the workshops. The software itself runs on a server which can be rent according to a timetable. One has to book the meeting time directly at the provider of the video conference server. Access to the server can be provided with the link to the meeting. To fully take part at a virtual meeting, the following hardware requirements have to be fulfilled. The participant needs to have internet connection the whole time, as the platform is browser-based. The computer of the participant needs speakers, a microphone and a camera for communication. The hardware configuration can be tested and adjusted before entering the virtual meeting room. In the virtual meeting room, all participants have the possibility to communicate with the others via speech and, and video signal. In the meeting room, only the participant is allowed to talk at the same time. The participant who wants to speak next has to queue in a numbered line. If it is necessary, participants can also interrupt each other with an interrupt function. Additionally, all participants can share information in a chat area and upload documents on a download platform. It has proven to be useful to have one regional meeting point which fulfills the organizational functions. Those functions include keeping an eye on the timetable, introdu introducing the next presentation and leading the discussions. Developments and Results 
there are also several challenges for the presented virtual meeting structure. One main challenge is the time shift between the different countries. For example, the 2013 meeting was held in the time zone of El Salvador. Members with the biggest time shift between the time zone of their country and the time zone of El Salvador came from India. Between these countries, the time shift is about 12 hours. For an Indian participant, the meeting is held through the night. Another disadvantage between a virtual meeting and a meeting with physical particip participation might be the lack of personal contact, for example in lunch or coffee breaks. From our point of view, it is important to have this personal contact and it helps to develop sympathy um, or trust to a person. Therefore, we tried to solve this problem by opening a flash meeting for the breaks. However, we have recognized that the participants need a real break uh, where they can walk around or get into the fresh air. Thus, the break flash meeting were not used by the participants to get in touch with other participants. Furthermore, strong internet connection is necessary to use the video conferencing tool and to be able to participate in the meeting without any inconveniences. The benefits of the virtual meeting structure are the low costs for the participants and the sustainability of the meeting. The participants do not have to pay for travel costs. This is important especially for the participants from developing countries, where it is often a problem to pay the travel expenses for such meetings. Because of this, the participation is not restricted due to the lack of money and thus every person who is interested in a topic um, or is seen as important for the project can participate. Also, the sustainability of the collaboration is higher than in conventional, meet con conventional meetings. Like mentioned before, because of the low-cost approach, it might be possible for every person to participate each year at a meeting. With the participants, the scientific know-how and the developments of prior um, meetings stay in the project and thus the collaboration is more sustainable than in conventional meeting structures where people can only participate if the travel costs are paid. Prior to the conference, the talks are recorded. During the meeting, the talks are played as a video. These videos stay in the Internet and can be watched by the participants again, by people interested in the topic or by people dealing with similar problems. A new meeting structure in the context of an open community approach with regional meeting points was established. After the 2012 meeting, a report about the performance of the meeting was created, where possible improvements and necessary changes in the meeting structure were written down. Improvements in the organization and the meeting performance can be re recognized when comparing the 2012 meeting with the 2013 meeting, for example. For example, in 2012, most people participated physically at a meeting point in Bonn. Because of the improvements in the meeting structure, it was possible that all people could participate virtually in the 2013 and the following meetings. With the help of this meeting structure, it is possible to work within a project with different project partners from all over the world. For example, the expert focus group used this meeting structure to discuss and to evaluate a concept for a living lab in El Salvador with the project members from Canada, El Salvador, South Africa, India and other countries. The novelty of our approach of the meeting structure in comparison to other approaches of virtual conferences um, the conference serves in our case as pre preparation for the establishment of problem solutions, for example a living lab structure. In 2013 workshops, first milestones could be reached with a basic structure of a living lab for El Salvador with the objective to lower the risk of chronic kidney disease for the agricultural community. This meeting structure is also used for site meetings in the framework of the UN COPWARS. Conclusions and Prospects In the context of UN OSA, the objectives include that benefits of the application of space technologies can reach rural communities or regions suffering from a certain public health problem. In open communities, a living lab is a research concept that creates a user-centered open innovation ecosystem. The main objective 
of Living Labs in the context of the expert focus group is that benefits of space technologies should reach the communities and that the research concept quantifies the impact on public health. The approach of virtual conferences enables the different parties of the Living Lab to communicate without the exclusion of parties due to financial issues, for example traveling expenses. By implementing low-cost technologies and the approach of an open community, the developed product can be provided free of charge and the population and, in the case of the use of open source software, local computer scientists can enhance the software easily and adapt it to their needs. In the Action Team 6 follow-up initiative workshops 2012 to 2015, a milestone could be reached with the basic structure of a living lab for El Salvador with the objective to lower the risk of chronic kidney disease for the agricultural community. Furthermore, the conference procedures applied within the expert focus group contribute to the objective of collaborative mapping for risk management and tailored allocation of available resources because this way also stakeholders from developing countries can join problem-solving activities. It is recommended for the next expert focus group meeting to present contributions to collaborative mapping of different angles to derive stakeholders of the Living Lab and workflows within the Living Lab to be able to reach the goal of collaborative mapping for risk management and tailored allocation of available resources. Thank you for your attention.